Hello there fellow acolytes, welcome to my second video in the Beyond the Moon Runes of Saturn series. Last time we looked at a Japanese exclusive title, but this time we're going to look at a game that received an English panel release. If you hadn't guessed from the title of the video, it's Deep Fear. Deep Fear was released at the back end of the Saturn's life cycle in June of 1996 in Europe, and the Japanese version was released a month later. They didn't actually release many copies in Europe, so as you can imagine, it costs quite a lot these days. The PAL version actually costs more than 200 quid. The Japanese version, however, costs about 15 quid. But just how playable is it? Survival horror games are quite big on stories, so language can be a major barrier. So let's have a look at the game and see if it's worth picking up. Straight from the main menu, you can see the title of the game and press the start button. As such, it's very welcoming for English speakers because all your options are in English. We have new game, load game, options. If you go to options, you can see your options all in English. HP, regulator air, block air, bullets. These are all part of your HUD. Enemy search is actually a lock on functionality. When you're aiming, if you press the L button, you'll lock on the nearest enemy. Turn it on if you want the auto-aim, turn it off if you don't. The cutscenes too, as I'm showing this brief clip of here, are all fully voiced in English. They have Japanese subtitles, which are for you know, the intended Japanese audience, but everything is in English. As such, following the story is no problem at all. This is not only for the cutscenes, but it also extends to the voices in the game when you're talking to NPCs. As such, you won't have a problem following the story. Three, two, one, go. Moving on to the game, you can see that the menu in the start menu is all in English. If we scroll through the different options, the option menu is just like on the opening title screen. Everything's in English. I will go into it in detail because there's no point. File is where you access any files you've picked up. I don't actually have any at the moment, but they are all in Japanese. However, those just give you a little bit of extra backstory, so they're not really anything majorly important and aren't necessary to understand the story. You can also look on game facts for these files, so if you want to read them, you can read them there. Map. The map shows you maps for different areas. Click on the map area, you can see uh, a little map. It's all in English, more or less, apart from the titles of the rooms. As you can see, I'm changing now. If it's red, it means that there's very little air there. If it's green, it means it's got a lot of air. And if it's black, then the game doesn't know because you haven't been there yet. Weapons, bring up your weapons, and all in English. Really nothing to do there. Click on a weapon and it sets it. If we click on item, you can see the items here. They all have pictures, but with Japanese names. For the most part, it doesn't really matter though. This is a chemical I've picked up, which you, know, you can see has a pretty vague name, which is used to solve the puzzle. This is obviously first aid, which heal different amounts as you would expect. This is a grenade, as again you can tell, this is an air grenade. You'll find out that air grenades refill your air if you're in a room that doesn't have much oxygen. So let's try that now just to show you. This is a rebreather but you don't have to worry about that because it automatically sets. When you're in a room that has no oxygen or you're underwater, you'll automatically equip it and that's just a way of using your air. Right, so let's get out of here and throw the grenade. Boom, boom. Excellent. As you can see with the hood, the hood is all in English too. So again, very easy to figure out what's what. Now in the next room, this area has one of the puzzles which you may struggle with on the Japanese version. So I'm going to go through it now. Effectively, when you look at this computer, it brings up an email. Of course, it's all in Japanese, so you can't understand. 
what it says is that the insecticide that you gain is accessed through this special machine, and then the guy starts talking about your man's birthday. Next to the computer, there's a picture celebrating this guy's birthday, and you'll notice at the bottom it says 10.25. This is a clue. So we're going to go now to where the puzzle is. First of all, I'll show you this. This is a special system. It has air system, R charge, save game, and exit menu. At the moment, save game and air system is deactivated, but when you click air system, it will refill the counter at the top. R charge will refill your air, which is the rebreather. Save is obviously save, and exit menu is obviously exit. Okay, skipping ahead to this area, medical to air. This is where you originally get the junk key where you look in that dude's jacket. However, once you've gone the two vials elsewhere in the game, you access this machine. This has a little puzzle. This is where you need to use your 1025. What you need to do is a start, stop, da da da, do it for the other, and reset. If you stop it on 10.25, then you get your insecticide, which is as per that dude's note. Not something that's particularly easy to figure out if you don't have the English version, but it's not impossible. Moving on, here is the other part of the game that I found to be a little bit confusing in the Japanese version. You'll get to this area underwater and you'll pick up this item. If you're not paying attention, it looks like an ordinary grenade. However, if you look at the picture, it actually says for extinguishing fires. That is because you need to use it upstairs. When you go upstairs, there will be a fire that you can put out using this item. I was looking for a fire extinguisher or maybe some kind of lever to activate a sprinkler system, but that wasn't the case. I merely had to use this item in the room. It's not something that's amazingly easy to figure out, but if you're paying attention, it's not amazingly difficult. So there we have it, Deep Fear. As you can see, there's a hell of a lot in English. The voices are all in English, and the cutscenes are all in English, but with Japanese subtitles. As such, it's very easy to figure out what's going on. Things like the notes and the item names may be in Japanese, but they're not something that's necessarily integral to the plot or necessarily too important for gameplay. Of course, they do make things a little bit more difficult than if you had the English version, but do you really want to pay an extra £200 just to make things a tiny bit easier? That's what you have to ask yourself. As such, I consider this a definite recommendation for the system. Don't let the Japanese language put you off. This game is fully playable if you buy the Japanese version. Definitely recommended. Well, thanks a lot for watching this episode of Beyond the Moon Runes of Saturn. I'll see you next time. Bye.